Hey there, I'm Luke Small, the boat building educator at Maine Maritime Museum, and I'm really excited to introduce Anna Dibble, the founding director of Gulf of Maine Eco Arts and a visual artist and writer. Anna has shown her work in galleries and museums throughout New England for over 40 years. She was a writer, designer, and music composer for animated shorts on Sesame Street, has designed and created sets for opera and theater, and has worked in animation studios, including Disney, Marvel, and Hanna-Barbera features. Anna will be speaking with other sea change artists at Maine Maritime Museum on Thursday, March 2nd at 6 p.m. in a presentation focused on the work of Gulf of Maine Eco Arts. She will also join other environmental artists, scientists, and experts in a panel titled Environmental Advocacy and the Arts at Maine Maritime Museum on Thursday, March 22nd at 6 p.m. For information on both events, visit the events page on our website at mainemaritimemuseum.org. Climate change in the Gulf of Maine are going to become the main subjects now. I mean. I can totally predict that and believe in it. Five years from now, it's all people are going to be talking about. It's climate change and the people living near this body of water, the Gulf of Maine. It's huge. And I hope that we can start that process. I've spent most of my life painting and showing my work in galleries. Uh, and then to make a living for many years, well, for about 10 years, to make a living I worked um, in, in the animation world in Los Angeles and San Francisco and New York. Um, and the rest of the time, I did a lot of different things to make a living. My, my father was a visual artist. He was a, he was a landscape painter and a sculptor. And so he always had paints around and, and supplies and was very encouraging. And my mother was a musician and she was, I grew up in a family that was pretty creative. So we always made our own Christmas presents and that kind of thing. And um, and I, I just, I just naturally did a lot of artwork when I was young. And then I think when I was probably about, I think 20, 19 or 20, I, I started showing my work. My father was the head of a, a local arts uh, center in where I lived in Vermont and he, he was encouraging me. And by starting to show my work, it, I started to take it more seriously because then I was painting something for a show. I'd have a, have a series of work and then hang it in the show. And I started selling my work and it, it, it all sort of started there. Um, and um, I, I, I worked in a lot of mediums and I was learning. I didn't really, I went to regular college. I didn't go to art school. Um, so I'm pretty much of a, a self, self-trained self artist, although I, I had some good mentors along the way, some teachers who taught me drawing and sort of basic stuff, printmaking, things like that. I moved to um, Portland, Maine seven years ago. My, my husband had died two years previously, and I had always wanted to live near an ocean. And we used to come up here in the summer. And so I decided I was going to leave Vermont, sold our house and, and moved here. And soon after I got here, I was, I was in retirement age, so I was able to paint full time. And um, I found that I was sort of missing being part of something in the outside world the way it had been when I'd had to make a, make a living. Um, and I heard that the, the Gulf was warming faster than most of the oceans in the world, which I thought was a amazing statistic. And so I, uh, I had that in my head and I thought, OK, what can I do with this? And I always was interested in collaborative art. And I was I was part of a, a cod funeral. In, in the streets of Portland in 2018, um, we, we painted a, um, a paper mache cod that we put in a, in a funeral march through, through the city. And um, my friend Lee Chisholm did a, a um, eulogy for this cod on the steps of, of, of City Hall. And that got me really kind of taking the idea I'd had before and informing it in more of a way of thinking, okay, what about making a giant sculpture installation to show people what's going on underneath the waves. You know, the cod is left, the shrimp have left. How, how do we do this in art? And that was the initial um, idea. And then I talked to Bigelow Lab because I heard that they worked with artists and the rest was history because they jumped on the idea right away, um, which, was, which was great. It's set up as a narrative. So um, with, with, we, we start with, with the Gulf of Maine pre-colonial time when everything was pristine and there were, there were all the wildlife in the water was, uh, there were lots of it. There were many fish, many, many plankton, many everything. It was just a very different time because human beings hadn't come along to start making the changes to it. So that's how we start. We have a, a large 
mural that will be on the entryway when you come, and it will be the Gulf of Maine watershed. We won't have any place names, um, and there won't be any people in it. It will just be this is this was this is this body of water, and this is what this was. And then when you go in, the first part is what we're calling the dark section, um, which is the current situation with the Gulf of Maine and, and climate change. And we will have this 24-foot whale um, sculpture in, in that room. It's going to be fairly dark, dimly lit. We have paintings and art that will, will represent a lot of climate change issues, uh, things like drought and flooding, fires, that kind of thing. So people will go through that and experience this kind of downer. <laughs> and then you come through the, the, this, this room into the light. And this is the, the other part of the exhibit is more about hope. And we have a 15 by 16 foot um, mountain, which is a replica of Ammon Rock, which is Ammon Rock is the highest peak in the underwater mountain range in Cash's Ledge. A lot of our exhibit is about Cash's Ledge and trying to uh, federally protect it permanently protect it because it's a it's a very unique ecosystem within the Gulf of Maine ecosystem it's it's very healthy because the mountain range and this the 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 kind of currents we call them like a food pump that that rotate around it, uh, the water <coughs> in the mountain range um pull the plankton up and down so it makes for a very healthy uh, kelp forest and a kelp forest is something that doesn't really exist on a lot of the coast of Maine anymore because of the warming. But there in this spot, it's there and also the inhabitants. It's, it's a, the biodiversity is extraordinary. So that's, that's what this mountain is about. It, it's painted. We also will have 3D, um, ceramics and, and you will go around the back of it and we have a special, transform it um it's a it's a special kind of a tent it will be what we call the projection room you go inside there and you will get an even more intense underwater experience in there because we have footage from brian scary's trips um, brian scary is a national geographic photographer we've, we've been working with and and when you that you will be underwater in that tent with this footage that we're we're kind of creating in there um, and then there's another two rooms. There's one that is Earth Heroes and Heroines, which is the future and the people all over the world who are working to try to find solutions. Um, diverse group of people from many different countries. That's sculpture and painting in there. And then we have something called the Eco Lab that the museum is orchestrating with us uh, that is more of the science and the explanations and things like that for the for the more abstracted artwork. I mean, the, the main theme was changes in biodiversity uh, in the Gulf of Maine due to human impact. And that still is sort of the, the, the main um, uh, goal here. But then then the other thing is working with science, you know, having science and art so that, that the art in, in a metaphorical way is 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 teaching people the science, because so often scientists will talk about data, they'll talk about a certain situation, they'll talk about the reasons for the changes in the Gulf of Maine due to the warming. And often it just is things that people kind of just don't understand. So that's what we're trying to do is is through art show them this is what's happening. And of course it's abstracted, so it's not we're not spelling it out, but it's 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 definitely I think a way of reaching people's emotions. And that's that's our, our aim is it's 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 kind of a, a large goal is to change people's consciousness consciousnesses awake them to to the fact that they are part of this uh this they are everything is connected that they they are they are a part of all these other this whole ecology that's that's in the in the water and in the land and that that we are related to the plankton and that the plankton are just as important as we are to to just Try to try to also just connect them to the natural world again, because I think that's been lost with the urbanization of, of humankind over the years. And it's to me, it's always been the reason we're having this crisis with the climate is, is that we lost the touch with it. And I grew up in Vermont and always had that with me because I had a, I lived in a town that had fewer than 50 voters. And my father was an amateur naturalist. So I went camping and I was around. We had wild animal pets and I I have carried all that into this project because I realized when I, as soon as I left home and was living out in the world that most people aren't like me. Most people really don't have that connection except in sort of very vague ways with their pets or with a sunset or something. But 
this on a, on a much deeper level is what we're trying to reach people, you know, so that they can start maybe changing their lives in that way. I don't think of myself as being kind of a directly activist artist, although I think, I mean, this project is, is, is that, um, I, when I did move to Maine and I started painting before I started the project, I, I had been painting, um, <laughs> I'd been painting dogs and animals sitting around tables and things like that, um, making comments about society <laughs> and they weren't really, uh, active. It wasn't anything like that. But when I went, moved here and I heard about the, the Gulf heating up, a lot of my art now, the series I've been working on, which are, it's, I'm following these voyagers. They're these people and animals and boats that are sort of like climate refugees. It's, it's subtle. It's not, I'm not spelling it out like a, you know, like a big protest sign, but it's, it definitely is generated from my feeling for, for the ocean and for the land and for the environment. Um, and this the 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 exhibit is much more focused on that whereas my art's a little bit more subtle but it's the same thing it's actually both 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 are kind of the same i don't think everybody is is the same kind of activist i think some of us are some of us are the kind of activists that that really are interested in protesting and doing signs and, and joining those kinds of groups that are organizing things like that some of us do what I do and try to think, okay, how can we do artwork in a way that's more of a, I guess I, I look at it, my, my way is sort of more of an educational bet. Um, I don't know. I think the main thing to find out is try to figure out is who you are. How do you fit into the activist world? And by, by joining groups and maybe that one doesn't work out for you. And then, so try another one. I think it is a way of finding it. I mean, I, I think I found myself in a way because I, I I joined 350 Maine and when we did the con, con funeral and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed doing the artwork for it. But I also found that I didn't really fit my personality didn't fit into a group like that. And that's so that's why I started my own version. And I, I encourage people to do that. If If you're an artist, you can start something like what I do. You just you start it from scratch. You have an idea, you grow it. I think I started out connecting with with some teachers like Lee, and there was a few others, and I'd have coffee with them. And and same with the artists. I found artists that I'd like their work, and especially because they were doing work along the same lines I was in the natural world or environmental world, that that kind of thing. Um, and and then I would I would talk to them, and then they would introduce me to other people. It's it's that networking process, and I just spent a lot of time doing it. It took a while to find the right people to work with and, and write what I mean is just for me personally that it would they would fit into this particular project. Um, but we did find them and, and it was amazing that I mean, I, I think that also it's Maine. I don't know if I could have done this in my home state of Vermont. I don't think I could have. Maine has a um, the art climate here is such that a lot of people start projects. I mean, it's 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 wonderful for that. You feel like you can do that. To me, the future of a lot of art and artists are going to be projects like this, this immersive installation process. It's just starting. I think there's a lot of this going on now, and I think it will evolve. And And I, I just hope that people get involved with it, because in lots of ways, it's 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 more rewarding in some ways than doing personal art. I mean, I, I will always be do my own work in a studio, but. Doing this is it's just another kind of level of doing the artwork. And I hope people get involved with things like this. I'd say what I like best about them is is the the incredible amount of life in, in them. And I, I, I'm a land person because I grew up and lived in Vermont most of my life and there wasn't any ocean. And um, I didn't really know much about the oceans until I started working on this project. And it's extraordinary what the, what the life in the ocean. I mean, it's, it's beyond what most people know. I mean, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. Mm -hmm.